welcome back everybody this is our I think it's our second or maybe third kind of installment of hearing from some of our children's youth and families workers and we've got Fiona joining us today which is wonderful so Fiona I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and the ministry that God's called you to yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Fiona and um, I'm at Romsey Baptist Church, uh, just sort of between Southampton and Winchester. Um, I've been in the CYF role there um, coming up to five years actually. Prior to that I was a secondary school teacher uh, but really felt God calling me into the, the church that I was already part of as a member, um, yeah, about five years ago. So. So, and I know lockdown's been like, uh, obviously it's been intense for lots of us, but you, you've got two girls, haven't you? So I've um, been having to juggle some of the homeschooling alongside your ministry. How have you found that? Yeah, so I'm mum to two girls, nine and six. And um, yeah, it's been interesting. Um, my husband has been at home as well throughout. So he's been at home since last year. And I think in the first lockdown where it was kind of shock to the system and everybody was just finding their way, we sort of managed that between us. Um, we're working all hours in the evening once the kids had gone to bed, which I'm sure, you know, for loads of people has been the case. And then I think this time around, it's been, we found this lockdown a lot harder, this second one. I think mainly because the schools were in their groove and so their expectations of, of what the kids could produce at home and what we had to submit uh, was certainly more challenging. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I think I'm part of a church which has been so loving and supporting and understanding, actually, that we've had to juggle this stuff, um, you know, alongside work and, and home life. So yeah so it's been interesting but we're still here we've survived <laughs> yeah no you've been amazing and um i think yeah you, to be able to juggle all of that and and still be here just standing whatever <laughs> but you're not just standing you're doing some really exciting and wonderful things and i know that this has been like a real time of um learning for, for the church especially around intergenerational ministry because we've it's kind of our hand has been forced a little bit and I wonder what your reflections on that would be. What has intergenerational ministry kind of, what's been brought to the fore during this time for you? Well, I think for me, I've been really passionate about faith in the home for a long time and uh, love some of the work that's out there, like Rachel Turner at Parenting for Faith and um, just this, you know, um, care for the family and their raising faith stuff. There's been some brilliant um kind of faith at home uh, resources out there for us but I think when lockdown happened it just emphasized for me that the, the importance actually that we equip our families to journey through faith at home and not rely on the church and I think there's there is a danger isn't there and there has been certainly historically that people have just left sort of faith formation of our children and young people to the church um, and I think what the pandemic has done is kind of force everybody into their homes and all of a sudden parents have had to if they've wanted to and if they've chosen to engage with it they've had to parent for faith at home and and um, that's been a real passion for me throughout this year is how do we do that um, you know and I, I often hear parents say uh, particularly parents that weren't um, kind of didn't have an experience of growing up in a Christian home you know they hadn't been parented in that way and so you know they were saying I don't know how to do it because my parents never brought me up in faith and so how do I sort of um, grow my children up in the faith and and um, so I think that's been really on my heart throughout this year as, as my role as a CYF worker um how have i equipped the families to ensure that they could do some of this stuff at home and and what does intergenerational church and worship look like within it within the home um so that's been one of the things that i've been yeah really passionate about and driven by no that's that's wonderful i wonder if you could just give i know like it's a whole um almost a whole world of of, of look looking at things so I know it's it's huge topic but if one or two ideas about what that looks like um so what we've tried is we ran as a church online the parenting for faith course um which we had um uh, four families engaged with that which was really good we did that online um I guess the great thing about online is that they didn't have to find babysitters and things like that so so that was really good um, also sending resources home um, that they could then engage with uh, at their own pace um, and obviously age appropriate depending on, on the families that were receiving those things um, and just trying to encourage them that they can do it we, we've kind of been like cheerleaders at the side um, saying to our parents you know you've got this and 
Um, I love that picture in, in scripture in 2 Timothy when Paul is um, sort of remembering the fact that Timothy's faith came from his grandmother Lois and then his mother Eunice and I just love that picture and actually you know God created, God designed sort of the faith formation and spiritual journey of our children to be in the home you know and, and as parents we are we are well placed to do that and um, it's just yeah how do we equip them and help them so certainly um, offering courses has, has been a good opportunity um, to do that online and yeah putting resources in um, has been really important and, and championing them saying you can do this you've got this has been really key. Why do you think because it feels like there was like a, a loss of confidence uh, what do you think played into that or what was that about why is it was it just that we just um, disempowered parents or that we kind of took over is yeah why why did the parents not all parents it's like it was a massive confidence crisis yeah. I don't mean it quite like yeah. that but like there seemed to be a lack of confidence around actually their ability to be able to share faith what was what do you think that's about well I'm not I don't know I don't know if I've got a, a, a fantastic answer for that but I think as church we've been so good haven't we in in, in providing programs like programs to the extreme so we'll put this on for this age group of kids we you know we might have a youth club we might have girls brigade we might have you know a super duper sunday program and actually we've offered so much that has just been there for families to engage with um and all of a sudden that's been taken away from them because of, of lockdown and they've had to sort of find their way so you know I don't know, dangerous ground saying that perhaps the church is doing too much. But I do think we have to look moving forward at, at what that looks like, actually. And do we just go back to offering loads and loads of programmes or do we try and come alongside families to do more of this stuff um, themselves or together, you know, getting families together? Um, I think it's, it's a really exciting time for us to, to think about what intergenerational church is going to look like moving forward and moving out of this time. Yeah. sorry about the noise of the budgies i um will try to i, I mean it maybe it enhances our conversation i don't think it does but you never know um <laughs> so uh, talking about that whole kind of intergenerational within the, our churches and stuff like that what have um okay let's tackle the question why is the intergenerational aspect of church important and and i mean it's such a shame because so often we make it like once a month in terms of the worship and it's, it's not part of the dna of a church it's a bit of a compromise kind of thing so tell us a bit why the why is important <laughs> <laughs> well i think what's um, what we found at my church, and I, I don't know whether this is across the board, but we really struggle with all age. I'll be really upfront and honest because it doesn't cater for everybody. Um, you'll get sort of a certain groups out there kind of cringing. Um, you'll get parents kind of, you know, all age supposed to be sort of free and it doesn't matter if the children are running around making a noise, but parents are still there kind of thinking, oh no, it's my child, you know, banging on the back of somebody's chair. And I just wish they could go out to Sunday church or, you know, children's church, whatever you call it in your context. Um, and so I think, you know, all age definitely has a place, but I think they're really tough and I think lots of churches really struggle with them. But I think one thing that's really hit me about intergenerational church is the relationships. Relationships across the generations are so important. You know, quite early on in lockdown, I asked my six year old what she was missing most about the church fully expecting her to say the biscuits at the end uh, but she said my hugs with Molly now Molly is a lady in her late 70s in church always has the biggest cuddles and um and my daughter when she thinks of church she has missed Molly's cuddles and I think to me that just spoke volumes about how important its generational relationships are um in church and um, I think it's how do we how do we build on that going forward? And actually, as a church, we're thinking in terms of sort of our leadership are starting to think about when we come out of lockdown, let's not rush into the busyness of church and programmes, but let's build relationships again. Um, and, uh, you know, and uh, another thing we've done, uh, the guy that's kind of heading up a lot of our youth work at the moment, he's encouraged our teenagers to start writing letters uh, to the older folk in our church. And it has been beautiful, such a beautiful time. And the older folk have started replying and they're, they're now praying for each other. And, and um, 
it's been a real time of opening up those relationships that perhaps we hadn't invested in as much prior to, to lockdown. Um, so I think that's that's one thing that you know we'll be looking at. Um, I think the other thing that we've done slightly differently is in the autumn when we were allowed to have a little bit of church again, um, because we couldn't, we didn't feel it was right to have children's church, we brought families in for what we called family worship and families sat round a table together and they had everything that they needed on their tables for the sort of half an hour, 40 minutes that we were together for. Um, and we, it was just so refreshing to see families together, worshipping together, praying together, opening God's word together, having fun and games and doing silly challenges that hopefully the parents could then carry some of that with them uh, to home and, and sort of continue that throughout the week. Um, and that's been really valuable. And we're starting to hear now, aren't we? What are your COVID keeps going to be? When we come out of lockdown, what will you keep? Um, and as a church, we've decided that they are that is going to be one of our COVID keeps because we've just found it so valuable to have families. And that's included grandparents. So we've definitely been multi-generational in that. It hasn't just been parents and children. Grandparents have come along too. And, um, and that chance to worship together. And we'd love to do more of that and see more of that as we move forward. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. And actually, and as obviously as we can move forward and things get much more freer, because um, I was like thinking um, in, in, in my context, there's often um, people that are friends of those with children, but they could join their table, couldn't they? Which just brings that sort of dimension to it as well. So those that may be single or, or don't have children can be, can be part of it if they if they want to be and I love that what you're saying around it being around relationships um, and how key that might be and there's loads of um, activities whether that's games or food which is often you know is, is intergenerational isn't it? <laughs> definitely <laughs> it has, has to be food <laughs> <laughs> walks when you know it's, 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 there's so much that we can do that can build on that family and reminding us that it's not um, worship obviously is important but it's it's not just that one hour on a Sunday it's it's so much of our, our lives so there's so much opportunity there really love what you're you're saying um around that so what would you say to like ministers that are kind of trying to do it all and you know they're trying to do the online they're trying to do the the face-to-face -face and um and often actually and, and they're just kind of leaving the CYF stuff to the well the the people that are on the team that might do that or the one or two people that are involved in that what might they do to just make some changes I think it's about allowing space and allowing room for people to get together and and do that sort of intergenerational stuff like you said whether it's a walk or whether it is on a Sunday morning whatever it looks like um and I think you know one of the sort of niggles that I've had at the back of my mind throughout as we've sort of started to set up family worship and talk about um, doing that a lot more is that we don't want to become divisive. We don't want to have this little pocket of families over here and then another pocket of another group over here doing their thing. And I think it's how do we maintain the church family as a whole while allowing space for some of these activities to, to happen. And I think it's a massive challenge, actually. And I think it's something that we are still definitely navigating as a church and what that's going to look like. Because the last thing we want to do is drive a wedge through, you know, the family and end up all di in different places doing different things. Um, so I think, I think that's, you know, something we're still figuring out, but something that I think everybody has to be so aware of because that's the last thing we want to happen. Um, especially what we're aiming for is intergenerational relationships across the board um, and not just saying, you know, that's the youth stuff going on there and that's the family stuff going on there. Um, so, yeah, I think I don't think I've answered your question, but it's I think it's something to be really aware about and just allowing space um, and, and see what evolves from, you know, what you've done. And, and God will will move in that and grow that as you kind of honour him and, and give it over to him. Yeah. Yeah. It's like one step at a time, isn't it? We don't have to kind of fix it all, all, all at once. So I, I, I love that sense of actually let's experiment. Let's try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You know, we're families. They go on trips, don't they? And some of them are nightmares and some of them are really great. <laughs> it's 
like you, you got to give these things a go thanks so much for giving uh, us your time and your wisdom and and helping us learn from your experience that's been really wonderful fiona and we're so fortunate to have you as part of our kind of association and, and being able to work work walk alongside you and yeah and, and it's great to have you as, as a colleague um in in that way um and we're going to hear now from some other cyf workers in our area and to hear what they have to say about intergenerational ministry i'm showing a little clip of our church camp because i think for me as a child just being with my church family doing things as whole church really helped my sense of belonging it helped me work out my faith as i watched adults around me acting it out and i heard stories and maybe experienced god at work in ways that maybe i wouldn't have done at the time in kids church we're really missing this at the moment in my family my kids love it and the joy and freedom they get from running around a campsite where every adult there knows them and values them as a member of god's big family is amazing the church has become so good at multi-generational worship where people learn and are discipled in age-appropriate groups but intergenerational group worship is where it gets messy um, quite scary to lead and unpredictable but we learn so much from worshipping with those of other ages uh, and serving with them and we would miss out if we weren't intentional in, in our churches to shift the culture to become more intergenerational and be the body of Christ. Intergenerational ministry in my context means probably two things for me at the moment. Firstly, dispelling myths like I'm too old to help with Sunday school and going further and helping people into roles where they can serve people of different generations. Perhaps encouraging people to be spiritual grandparents to a family at church, uh, helping the church to be one family and united. Innovating new ways of doing church where we look to reach the younger generations and involve them in the life of our church helping change without dismissing people of other generations. It's a wonderful vehicle for intergenerational ministry. At Easter, two children um, whose dads already serves on the team came along to help. They were handing out Easter gifts to families who came to collect food and they loved it. They felt part of the team and for some of our older youth and students who were perhaps feeling isolated at home during lockdown, they got an awful lot out of coming and serving regularly on that team. And my favourite um, experience of intergenerational ministry is Holiday Bible Club, where the team is drawn from across the generations in that single mission to reach children with the gospel but there's so much to gain from serving alongside one another, learning from one another and, and having an awful lot of fun.